and welcome to Indie Social. This is the podcast where I, Dylan Yeager, and Michael Huntington, interview independent filmmakers. Our guests come to the show to share with you, the audience, how they started in their filmmaking career, and maybe, just maybe, we'll get to learn a little bit more about them on a deeper and more personal level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode of Indie Social. Welcome to the show. Today, we have two filmmakers joining us. They are the founders of Creature and the Creep Productions. This duo are horror filmmakers. The two of them brought us the film Happy Birthday, which is in post-production, and they have a film in pre-production right now called American Dream. Joseph Belez and Derek Smith. Hey, how's it going? Hey, man. How you doing? Did he get your name right? He totally bombed it. Oh, my gosh. Did he really? <laughs> Joe, jo, put ch- chair down, Joe. Chair down. Chair. Put it down. Put it down. Oh, it's buff. Just think of it like B U H. Buff. I keep doing this, man. Every single guest. I know, dude. I'm going to have to fire you, bro. Yeah. Can you get fired from your own show? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> apparently. <laughs> apparently. Yeah. You can't now. Is that why you brought Emil with us today? Yeah, he's, he's going to replace you, man. So we have Emil walking around right now doing uh, some behind the scene videos and photos for our social medias. Which you need to like. We so need one like, like them all. So no awkward scratching, grabbing, nothing like that. I mean, you don't want to. Right. <laughs> now it's going to be documented. <laughs> yeah, man. So let's just start off with uh, how'd you guys meet? <laughs> is it a long, passionate story? It, it is you know, long, most people is. say, you know, well, I've known this guy for five years. Great friend of mine. This man, I can literally say we've known each other for 30 years. Wow. Literally like yeah. hanging out in kindergarten, found out he lived like a block away from me. And the dude would just walk through the alley up to my house. And that's what we did. <laughs> yeah. That was our, our journey and home. And you guys just hung out all the time? Yeah, pretty oh, yeah. much. So when did your uh, your passion for film come in, uh, into the play? Were you guys always pretty passionate about horror films? Or <laughs> I think that's probably what made us play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's how it like, yeah, crazy shit. Yeah. <laughs> what, uh, do you guys have a mutual favorite horror film? I don't know. Like, we pretty much, like, everything that we like, we, we you know, the other one likes us right well. yeah. Yeah. So you guys are like uh, you guys are brothers yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's funny because we'll be watching a new movie and we'll be calling it out and be like well that's dumb mm-hmm. oh yeah, yeah why yeah, did you just do that yeah. they're just commenting back and forth like dissecting the movie as we're watching it and just it's like just just fusing together I mean we know what the other one's gonna say yeah so, so when did you guys get the passion to make your own films that hasn't always been a thing right like you guys are kind of fairly new to doing films yeah. right yeah we are fairly new but we've Man, we talked about this like when we were kids, like we wanted to do this. This mm-hmm. was something we wanted to do. And uh, like, man, I want to say maybe it was about four or five years ago. I went and I took an apprenticeship because I was like, I, I need to do something to start mm-hmm. it. And I got into a little bit doing some films down in Florida, working with some stuff. And then I came back and we, we've been talking and we've been throwing around ideas for a little while. And this year we're like, all right, we got to do this. So when you to. went off to Florida, did you did you guys kind of like break like the friendship, or did you guys still keep in contact? No, I still oh, no, I just, I'd always get a Florida, message. Yeah. Like he'd be doing Uber driving or something like that. Yeah, that dude, I picked true. up the weirdest damn person. Oh, like, man. I have yeah. to know more about this. Yeah, <laughs> like the guy that dropped his drugs in my car on his way to his drug deal. And I was like, <laughs> and then the next guy gets in his car, gets in my car, and he's looking at the floor. And I was like, is there something back there? And he's like. <laughs> No, no, no. And then I drop her, him off, and this girl gets in. And she goes, "Sir, it's none of my business, but you might need to pick up your marijuana." And I'm like, "My what?" Oh, <laughs> and I open up. I, I open up the back door, and then on the floor there was like a scale with all these drugs. And I was like, "Oh my god!" So we're going down the highway. And I was about, I was like, "I'm just gonna throw it out," you know, in this field. And she's like. No, no, no. Uh, I'll take. I'll take it. I mean, it. If you don't want it, I don't do it. But I'll take, I'll take it. it home and yeah, throw it away. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not. It, I'm, I'm, I'm not dumb. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> so when he was off in Florida, what were you doing? Just living life. Just living life. Yeah. Got married, had a kid, and that became everything. And he came back. He's like, well, let's start doing this. I mean, we've been talking about it for so long. I mean, when we were little kids, I mean, I used to terrorize everybody else's family. I'd 
take my mom's uh, utensils. I'd like take a knife and I'd bend it in half. <laughs> and I'd stick it through rubber and tie strings around it so you could poke it through your shirt. It looked like you just got it shanked. Oh my gosh! I remember our fr- doing that. Our <laughs> friend Darren Grimm, his, he went inside. He was had this his babysitter. I heard her scream from outside because she thought he got stabbed on the way home from school and just. The whole practical effects thing. I'm like, man, I want to keep doing this. I mean, it's, yeah. it's fun scaring people. So, in uh, in in terms of like the production, like, do you focus more on the camera work, or who's the camera guy, or do you, both of you guys kind of manage the cinematography? Well, I guess probably at this point in time, I'd be more of the cinematographer. Um, I'm not. I'm not. I know what I want to see. Right. And I like. I know enough that I can do what I want to do. Yeah. But I. Uh, I do I would I do like preferring to have another person there, you know, that actually can run the camera. Right. Yeah, so that we just worked on a happy birthday together and uh you I can't think of his name. Yeah, uh, Ricardo. Yeah, yeah. He you know, he was filming on a black magic, which was a, a really nice camera. Yeah, it's a good camera. And you know, yeah. he does great work. Yeah, he so was you doing get, you yeah. got a pretty tight team. Yeah, right like I met him, we did this we worked on a film that was a, a Superman a fan film. And he was a assistant director. Wait, hold on. Was Superman fan film? Do you, um, Nick, Nick Messersmith? Yeah, is that the yeah, same yeah, film? yeah. I was, was, I, same. was a, I was a PA on uh, one of those days for that film. Oh, were you? Yeah, I was I was doing uh, some lighting on those first couple of days. Okay. Yeah. Nice, man. Yeah, the Superman film's going to be cool, dude. I'm excited yeah. to see when it comes to, uh, when, it, when, it, you know, when it gets done. Wait, yeah. hold on. So who, who was the cameraman? For your uh, happy birthday? Uh, Ricardo. Uh, oh, okay. Gosh, I can't even pronounce his last name. It's like Rangelo. Okay. <laughs> Rangelo. <laughs> he's he's going to hear this and be mad at me. <laughs> Hell, man. Sounds like a car model does. <laughs> yeah. I drove here my Ford Rangelo. <laughs> so uh, what was your guys' first film that you made? Well, we did that short, uh, the trailer for... Yeah, the the Eternal Darkness. Yeah. We, did, we were trying to... We didn't really know how to go about it, mm-hmm. and so we got some people together, and we made a, a short trailer for a film called Eternal Darkness. And was it a short? It was a short, yeah. and we were going to make it into like, uh, we just made a trailer, and we were going to come back and do the the film later because everybody was pretty busy, and then like it just it just never was able to really grow and then I just kind of like you know what let's just move on mm-hmm. and try to start again did you guys ever get back to it at some point no, no just, I think it's something that's now. just gonna just kind of be a trailer just kinda... it's gonna sit on the corner of my computer screen so I can see it <laughs> and realize hey, that was that mess up I did don't do it again <laughs> but the best part was getting to paint Wade completely black yeah we did paint the guy completely black was he like a demon or something he was supposed yeah. to be a demon but like uh we didn't. We didn't really have the time mm-hmm. to like paint him the way we wanted to paint him. <laughs> yeah. So, solid so ears, he became completely everywhere. black. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you guys have some of like the craziest imagination because uh, Rob Merritt and I just wrapped up doing a happy birthday with you guys, and there was so much makeup, so much blood. You, uh, you know what? What I love about these ultra low budget films is uh, we don't have money for props. We use the real shit. You guys had a real ass chainsaw in my face. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I was a little startled when I saw it because Rob grabbed that thing and after he fired up and he started thrusting it towards you, I was like, um, dude, there's uh, still a blade uh, on there. I mean, the yeah. chain is still on yeah, that thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and man. he's just going to town for a minute there. I thought that was a real scream coming at you because I was. Pretty sure you were gonna get poked with a chainsaw. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the dedication. There was so much man. blood. You guys had like this hose and this blood just spraying at our face. And... Yeah. But interesting, <laughs> interesting top trial run with that. We were trying to get the blood to pump correctly, and I kept messing with it. Kept messing with it. I'm like this blood won't come out of here. And we're sitting there, and Joe was kind of standing off to my left. Yeah, I was holding I... the pump, and he was like <laughs> stabbing a hole. So and, I, and, like... I go, and I couldn't get the nail through. I'm like holding. I'm like, oh come on, I gotta get this thing through. And when I finally got the nail through, I pulled it back out, and it shot it, the hardest, steadiest stream of water directly in Joe's face. It, it hit like from right, across right, the room. right in the middle of my between my eyes. And he dropped everything, turned around, like, oh, my God, what was that? Yeah. He just shot me in the face with that. I'm like, yeah. oh, I guess it works then. I mean, at least it sprays like we want it to. It hit me so hard, I thought the ro- the, the, the rubber hose <laughs> broke and hit me in the face at first. So who who wrote that film? Who wrote that? Uh, I did. You wrote, I wrote it? that. Yeah. So are you writing the majority of your projects? You'd say. Um, as of right now, yeah. But uh, he is Derek is working on his project, and then we do have a couple things that we are working on together, and that's kind of 
how we were working right now. Do you guys kind of plan on like being co-directors for a majority of your guys' stuff? Yeah, I think that's kind of how it's working yeah. out. I mean, that, I mean, that's the benefit of knowing him so long yeah, and working definitely. as a team. I mean, work together. Yeah. I mean, whenever we got a project, we know we always got it's someone like, to help out. Yeah. With it, so. It's like, yeah. If oh, like, man, yeah, for sure. Because, I mean, I, like I said, I've got a couple projects I'm writing right now. No, you know, no official when we're going to start filming, right. but I want to get everything fine tuned. But it's going to be benefit me having him because he's going to see angles I may not have seen. For sure. He's yeah. like, well, we can try this and we can try this and, yeah. you know, really make it pop the way I want it yeah. to. So that'll be fun. Yeah, we're still in the process of writing. A, um, it's called the right now. It's just we're working title of the witch, mm-hmm. and like like I kind of came up with this idea of it was actually of him coming out of his house and finding like a woman hung in his tree. But as we were working with this, and like I was having troubles like seeing things, and I would just like blurt something out, and then he was like, "Oh." you mean like this and mm-hmm. he would come up with something completely amazing i'm like yeah let's and, that's great you know <laughs> and that's just mainly what it is i mean yeah. just he'll stop down he'll have a notebook he's like you want to write something I'm like well yeah let's write something and then we'll just move to the kitchen table and just it'll be an hour two hour back and forth of just piecing stuff together well yeah, yeah. i like that or we let's do that and so what you guys shoot your first uh, trailer with? Was that just like a friend shot that, or did you guys have a camera that you had? Um, I used my uh, Canon. Gosh, was it like a 5D or something mm-hmm. like that? Nothing, nothing too Nothing too fancy. Yeah. So what was it like to see a project come together? Um, you know, this being your first short film or what was going to be your short film, was that pretty magical to finally see your guys' stuff like on screen? Yeah, you know, like because I'm sitting there, I'm editing it, and as I'm, I was putting it all together... It was just like, it was just so nice to be able to see how all these pieces came together. And it was just completely like, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, it's crazy, man. It's definitely crazy. Um, So where'd you guys get your film knowledge from? Like the behind the scenes aspect, like what did you guys learn from on how to, you know, the technical aspect, aspects of making a film? Was that just kind of like trial and error or did you watch YouTube videos on to learn the terminology or? Um, Well, I learned most of my stuff. I would. Gosh, I like I took an apprenticeship when I was in Florida and mm-hmm. I worked with this guy. His name's uh, Dean Baker, and he has a, his little production company down there. He was a great guy, and he he taught me quite a bit. But then like one of the the guys that was worked for him, his name was Rob, and like I don't know, like that guy just he's into all of film and video. So if I ever have like an issue come up, I'm like, what do I do? I, I'll send him a message, and he's like. Have you tried this? Mm-hmm. You know, that's basically where I learned most of my stuff from. What about you? You just kind of learn off of him, or that's that's. that's I mean, I, I do a lot of that. I mean, just I kind of pick up. You know, he'll throw it down, and it's it's cool to learn like that. I mean, yeah, like we we we, we learn a lot quite a bit off of each from other. Each other, yeah. yeah. I mean, and I I we're both huge readers too. I mean, right. we just got yeah. piles of reference material. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Especially like that. I mean, I love looking back and seeing how stuff's done and mm-hmm. analyzing it. I mean, I get more fun watching how may you know how to do this than like actually behind the watching scene the videos. movie itself. Oh, yeah, yeah, dude. I mean, yeah. for me, it's like for some reason, I'll, when I get a DVD, the first thing I always do is go behind the scenes and just watch the video, like watch the movie on how it was made before I even yeah. watch the movie, man. Because yeah. it's just so amazing. That yeah, kinda leads into this question I had that just came to my mind. <clears throat> so, since you guys started filmmaking. Has it kind of affected your love for cinema in a different way? Like, so like when we were all younger, we watched a movie. We, a lot of us really didn't think about like what's happening behind the scenes. Like, how are these scenes coming together? Do you like catch yourselves watching these movies now, like imagining what's going on behind that camera? Um, yeah. it, like, it's sometimes unless it's a really really good movie that I get completely lost in. Yeah. Um, I a lot of the movies get kind of ruined for me because I'm like, <laughs> wa- like watching it, trying to enjoy it, but I'm just thinking too much about like what's happening behind this, behind the camera. Yeah. I've, well, I, you know, like a lot, I got, I, <laughs> when I watch them, a film now, as opposed to before, I would definitely say that the biggest thing I, I see myself doing is like paying attention to the story. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I watch so many movies and then I pay attention to like I read so much and like learned so much just about like storytelling that I'm sitting there and I'm like oh this is what's going to happen this is what's happening and the, and I I 
like kind of like conclude the ending Mm -hmm. and i tell the ending like at the beginning of the movie and then i'm right (laughs) <laughs> and people are like you watch this you lied to me i was like well, i never watched this movie <laughs> well sometimes like it depends what horror movie you're watching but sometimes it shit's very predictable yeah, like, right oh, in yeah. Beginning, yeah definitely you know? so yeah sometimes those are a little easier to call <laughs> yeah um so what was the next project you worked on after um that trailer that you made um it would have been uh well for film it would have been this america or the the happy birthday. Okay. But I did some side production for a little while. I did some little corporate video thing. Sure. So, so, um, are you trying to like start your video production career now while also trying to do short films? Yeah, I would say probably me. I'd just rather just do the short film things to try right. to go into the filmmaking. Definitely. Uh, you know, trying to make a corporate video, like, there's just so oh, many, like you, those those people are just like I want this and, I want this and this and, and this. I go out and I'm making it and then they're like what are you doing you're not making what I want you to. I was like I'm making exactly what you told right. me to do <laughs> they're just not happy with it now yeah um so uh so what happy home what is it called happy birthday yeah happy I keep saying happy home because he has a film that he's working on called happy home and you guys have a happy birthday so I'm keep get, I'm keep getting them like, switched up. <laughs> But uh, happy home. So, what's kind of like the the story behind that? Like, what's the what's the synopsis? There's, I can't. I can't of say happy word. birthday. Of happy yes. birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> Jesus, did I say it again? Happy it's home. it's literally the story of my best friend sitting across the table from me, having images of how to kill me. Yeah. Okay. That's <laughs> He's like, hey, go, hey, what's the best way to kill somebody? Or yeah. best birthday present you can yeah. get? Let's kill them on their birthday horror movie yeah. style. I'm like, so you want to kill me? That's what you're saying. Yeah. Thanks, bud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I wrote the the script like last year. And it was right about his birthday. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's what was like, what do you give a horror fan for his birthday? And I was like, I'm going to kill him horror movie style. And so <laughs> I wrote that script. <laughs> so it's kind of his birthday present. <laughs> um, so, so what was it like having all these people at your house, Derek? Because this was all completely filmed in your garage. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> was it weird? It was absolutely weird. <laughs> How many people did you have on set? God, what was it? Was it about eight? Eight or nine, I was going to say. It's yeah. a lot of people, man. But yeah. yeah, I mean, and we had everything blacked out so we could control the light. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it went so much, and it, it, it oh, kind of yeah. trailed longer than we thought. Joe looks at me, he's like, man, it's getting late. We got to start getting these people out of here. And we yeah. walk outside, it's two o'clock and it's still light. And it was <laughs> yeah. just so damn dark. We yeah. lost track of mm-hmm. what time it was. And it threw me off for a couple of days. I mean, I woke up the next day, I felt like I had a hangover. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me Because too. I was just in the dark for so long. I'm like, I mean, I feel bad for Dylan, man. We kept him tied up to that chair for a long time. 12 hours. <laughs> hey, I counted. <laughs> <laughs> and the only thing going through his mind, man, I could sure use a cigarette right now. No, no, no joke. Man. Yeah, <laughs> and it was cold. It was a really cold day. And you guys you guys were so nice. You had like this heater. Well, it was actually a giant light yeah. that you shined at my face to keep me warm. And it worked. But that thing, it worked? That thing uh, was, was nice. Yeah. <laughs> and it wasn't so bad in there until Ricardo started going crazy with the smoke machine. Yeah. Well, he's like, I'm going to try this. And he starts pumping smoke in. Next thing you know, my basement's full of smoke. My garage is full of smoke. Did your fire alarms go off? No, but Joe so, went to get something. Joe walked yeah. back in. He opens his door. He's like, whoa, what happened yeah. in here? And like, we let Ricardo play with the smoke machine. Yeah, man. So <laughs> like, I love fog machines. I recently bought one and uh, we'll, we'll do a lot of projects at Airbnbs. <laughs> and like the first thing I do when I'm doing that because uh, I, we, I've shot a film before and we used the fog machine and like all of the fire alarms went off and it was a big ass house so we had to like rush to each individual thing first thing I do when I get to an Airbnb is I just I turn them off because I know the fog machines are just gonna set them off man so yeah. something that was really cool is uh, I've never went to a movie set where one of the guys you know has a bar <laughs> yeah you uh, yeah. I've been dying to try the new Slipknot whiskey number nine and I was joking because you were like, you said something about I'm gonna go take a shot and I'm like, Do you no, my I didn't say I was gonna take a shot. Joe was talking about my whiskeys and then oh, Rob Ricard- said something yeah, Ricardo, and then Ricardo said yeah. he wanted a shot. And next thing I know, you're sitting over there getting makeup on. Hey, are we doing shots? I'm like, well, yeah. I guess we are now. <laughs> I, I definitely say that was the first set I ever worked on where everybody was like. Did everybody a was yeah, a little, a everybody was a little tipsy, but it was yeah. a great night. Yeah. That, that clip, sure. I, that behind the scenes clip I shared, uh, people are loving it and. Just that alone was pretty epic, so I'm really excited to see the final product. Do you guys kind of have like a, an estimate on when that's going to be done? Um, well, I with my 
my work schedule is kind of, <laughs> it's kind of like stretches everything out. So yeah. I'm hoping by December that I'll be able to have everything. So do you know roughly how long the film's supposed to be? It's going to be a right around between five to eight minutes. Sure. But I'm thinking it's probably going to be like closer to eight. Closer to eight. Do you guys have like, have you guys submitted to festivals yet? Like uh, with any of your other projects or? Um, I did my second project I've ever been in. I was, um, I did sound and I, I helped off the cinematographer, which was my friend Rob. Mm-hmm. And that film, gosh, I want to say, I can't remember the name of it. It was, like, <laughs> it was like 69 seconds or something like that. Sure. And that was, we made it for a 30 day film festival. Oh, wow. Okay. And like, we got into it and we're like, okay, we're going to do this. And then they're like, you know, we have to submit this film in like a week and a half. And we're like, oh, okay. So it was really like a week. I think one thing that you guys would probably love, have you heard of the 48 hour film festival? In um, Des Moines? Yeah, I've heard of it. Like, I believe his nephew said something to us a couple of years ago. About yeah, man, that. I think you guys are definitely, I love doing that. It's such a challenge. It's so yeah. hard. <laughs> Um, especially if you don't live by Des Moines, you got to drive all the way up there to put it back in, but it's definitely something fun to do. Or do you guys plan on submitting a uh, ha- happy birthday to uh, any festivals? Yeah. I was looking into like the, the Cedar Rapids film festival. Then there's mm-hmm. Halloween Palooza. Yep. And snake alley is a really good the one. Snake, really snake alley is yeah, a great one, man. Teen one. And then I seen there's this new one that's starting up over by Moline. I was like, Midwest uh, Horror Fest or something like that. Oh. I believe this is the first year for it. Okay. Hmm. Well, yeah. Isn't is that the one that uh, Talk of the Devil is in? I don't think so. No. Which which one's the new one that the Talk of the Devil at? You like some Muscatine? It it's Muscatine and Snake Alley are the only two, and Iowa Motion Picture Awards. I thought there was another one. Cedar, Cedar Valley. Valley. Oh, Thank Cedar you, Valley. <laughs> How do you know? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I don't clearly. I think no replies in there as well. Yeah, uh, well, horror in the valley. Horror. Yeah, that's what valley. it's called. That's what. Oh it is. yeah, yeah. yeah Talk about the devil's that one. I keep forgetting because I can't make it. Yeah. Um. So I just kind of, and I need to like submit some information to them too. It's next week, so yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I just, I, I, there's so much I gotta do. So yeah, much man. on my plate, man. Uh, we often talk about things we love about filmmaking. Is there anything that you dislike since you guys have started filmmaking? Like, is it is it the production side, the editing side, or anything? The pre-production, like writing the script. Like, is there anything you dislike? Having a guy tied to your to a chair in your garage drinking yeah, actually, on your whiskey. I enjoyed that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that, that sounds like a lot of fun, Dylan. Yeah. Oh, man. It wasn't a problem for me. I wasn't tied to a chair. Right. Yeah, I, mean, I thought it was absolutely golden. I mean, it's just funny watching you needing a cigarette. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I kind of wanted to wave it at you, which. You want it? You want, you want it? it? You want it? <laughs> I, out of all the productions I've been in, the the worst to me is, I would say, like on the the ones that are more hastily put together, <clears throat> that we don't really know what we're really getting into, right. and like I don't know how many times like I'd be on, a, and they're like, okay, we're gonna go shoot this, and and like I'm out there standing with a boom mic and pouring rain just like, waiting why why am i standing in the rain with a boom mic or why why did you tell me to wear why am i here <laughs> yeah why am i here and then the last time i was out i was on, on this before this i was on a project and they were like yeah it's, it's, it's going to be okay weather and i show up it's like 110 degrees and i'm like um no this is not okay <laughs> weather i don't want to be here anymore <laughs> <laughs> but once you're there man you're committed yeah, and then you feel yeah. like an asshole if you're like all right can i leave <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is there anything that you dislike so far? I mean, that, I'm kind of with him on that one. It's it's fighting the weather for some stuff. I mean, yeah. Like when we were sitting there for happy birthday, like Dylan was saying, it was starting to get cold out, and I've got and I was running the sound for that one, and it was fucking raining, and you can hear the rain <laughs> come down the roof, and you're sitting there like, hold on, <laughs> one Wait. second. Or dude, the worst thing is when a car is passing, then you got to stop <laughs> yeah, for a car. Quite a few of those. Yeah. <laughs> it happens, man. It's so and that's annoying. everybody just pause for a second, like. And Joe's like, just keep going. <laughs> All right, we're still rolling. And we yeah. just keep going. But And there's this one, I don't know, some dork that lives down the street from me. He decided to rip off his exhaust. And Joe's just... Oh. <laughs> yeah. And, it, and, it, and some people wouldn't even hear it. But I got the headphones on. I'm like, Joe's looking at me. I'm like... One second. Wait, yeah. wait, I hear this guy. I can hear him down the block. 
All right, go ahead. <laughs> and I did when I'm editing. I did pick that. <laughs> and I was like, I, was, I heard it, and I was like in the background. It sounds like somebody has a weed eater. <laughs> yeah. Dude, like, man, I always pray for never having to do ADR. Have you guys had to do that yet? I hate ADR. It's the worst thing in the world. <laughs> Just trying to rematch people's dialogue. It's really hard for actors, too. Cause, yeah. Um, I did ADR one uh, for a project the other day, and I had to say my lines louder than I normally would in the scene just mm-hmm. so it like it picks up and you just kind of lose some of that magic too and I I, mean, I hate ADR. Yeah, ADR but like Lord of the Rings it. though was like 100% ADR. Well, yeah, a lot of the I, I, I would are, shoot yeah. myself. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you guys go about finding your cast? Um, do you guys use Iowa Film or how do you guys find Dylan? Um, I, God, I posted I can't remember which one it was it was like on like Corridor Corridor uh, Filmmaking or something like Iowa City Filmmaking I think I can't remember which one it was but I posted into three different local for actors and it uh, he popped he hit me up and then right after that Rob Merritt popped up on I don't I want to say it was a, the same uh, same one I posted yeah the same posting <laughs> And me and Rob are like, we want in. We yeah. do that a lot. We, 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 I don't say, I don't think we necessarily go for the same roles, but we kind of like have the same taste in projects. Yeah. Well, something different, you know? Yeah. Like it's a cool script. And what, what was, uh, what Rob, Rob and I carpooled to the film set and, uh, <laughs> we were joking about how, like, I usually play the creepy roles and he plays like the type of role I was playing for Mike and we switched it up so rob <laughs> was the creepy guy and i was kind of like the normal everyday average joe uh how did it feel to you guys uh, seeing that these characters come to life was it weird um uh, a little bit uh when, <laughs> when like it was kind of funny because like i had this this very particular thing i seen in my head mm-hmm. and i was expect kind of expecting to see something close to it and we we went and before we we shot i i wanted them to run through because they said they had this this idea yeah. they wanted to do and i watched him do it and i was like all right what this isn't exactly what i wanted to see but it was great and i was like you know i gotta i gotta kind of let them like do their thing and as we were shooting it, I was like, okay, I got to pull him back a little bit. <laughs> but it was amazing to watch him just go out because when they, when it was kind of funny because they, they started out and they were just kind of like talking into it. Then like it built into like this slow roll and they, they just went on to this big giant rant with each other. And it was just like, it felt so fluid. I was like, I couldn't tell him not to do that. Yeah. Because it was so perfect. As a director, I'm like a big fan of like improv and letting yeah. the actors act, you know? Uh, I, I agree. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I know like sometimes with writers, when they're on set, like it's kind of hard for them to, yeah. you know, see what they wrote and like are very yeah. passionate about, like be changed by the actor. But I think you got to, man. You got to yeah. let the people do what, you do, you do what they need to do to make it feel more real to them. Yeah. I was on uh, like the, the 69 seconds film. I worked on it. The one of the actors was the act. He wrote the film, mm-hmm. and it was like he was a gr- he's a great actor. His name was uh, Swan Christopher, and he wrote it. And it was it was kind of funny because like we were working and we we're shooting, and the the girl that was working across from him was like she changed the line a little bit. Mm-hmm. He's like, no, this no. is the line. That's how and I wrote then, it. Like we we're like, well, we gotta we gotta just let this one kind of go you know yeah but, but in the end it was great it, like we we like finished like second and everything on that film well congrats but, man. yeah <laughs> then on like the superman film the the guy that wrote it he was sitting in the back on the very first day and he's like that's not the line <laughs> that's not the line <laughs> Do that. Do the guy who's playing Superman in that film is amazing, bro. Oh yeah, that uh, Dan. I can't. I can't. I, yeah, I can't remember his, his name either. Name, but, but like, yeah. like when he put on that suit, it was like I felt like almost starstruck, man, because he <laughs> looks so good as Superman. Mm-hmm. And uh, who's the guy he's fighting? I can't remember. Um, do you remember the actor's name? No, oh, the, the, the character. He Lex Luthor. Yeah, some. Yeah, Are it's he, like I think it. Yeah, it is Lex Luthor. Yeah, he it? was fighting Lex Luthor. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I wasn't there. Like, I didn't get to see any of the fun spot. Like, 
no action ever happened while I was on set. So I, I got to do, um, it was like a, it was like a pickup day for shots. So I got to see all the action and all the green mm-hmm. screen stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, that was pretty cool, man. I got to see Superman get like thrown through a bunch of bricks and stuff. It was pretty cool. Yeah. It was kind of funny. Like I left right before they were going to do like a bank robbing scene. Okay, and, and they would have like, did that the same place that they did all the behind the scenes or the the last pickup shot day. Yeah, well, the original place told them no because oh. like they pulled out like some fake realistic looking guns, and they're like, "You can't oh, have can't that have here, here, man," because it was like an actual like credit union. Oh, okay. So, like we shot like in their offices. Don't worry, we're here for a movie. Yeah, <laughs> and they were like, "Oh, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do the bank robbing scene," and then. Like everything kind of got held up, and I was like, "Well, I actually have to go," so I had to leave early that day. Oh, okay. And I was like, "On my, I get back home, and I send them a message, and they're like, "Yeah, we can't. We got told no." And I was like, "Well, <laughs> I felt bad that I couldn't see it, but like nobody got to see it because it didn't happen so, that so day." So they actually ended up shooting in a like an apartment complex, yeah, like yeah, an event yeah. center in an apartment complex, amazing apartment complex. I don't know if you've seen it where they where they filmed that, but I, I did see some of the footage of it, yeah, and I believe that's actually like that the guy that played yeah, Superman he lives there, yeah, that's where he lives, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> got to use your resources, man. Yeah. So how did you learn editing? Is it something that you've always kind of like known, or what um, do you use to edit? Um, well, uh, what I use to edit right now is Adobe Premiere. Sweet. Yeah, that's um, what I, use. I do, I don't know why, but I really want to get into using like the DaVinci Resolve and the Fusion. Well, DaVinci Resolve has amazing color science yeah, and stuff to use, man. So. That's, that's why I want to get into it. Cause I like, I want to, I want to mess with that. Yeah. And I, I, I learned that when I was down in Florida, Dean Baker taught me that, uh, there was a guy, his name was Scott fitting. He taught me quite a bit of it as well. So, uh, tell us a little bit on how uh, your inspiration behind American dream. Um, that is a, it's a, it's such a good script. It's really messed up <laughs> and I love it so much. Um, well, it actually kind of came to me one day when I was at work, there was this, I was, I worked with this guy and he always ever, he would sit there and he'd read the newspaper and then he would sit there and he would just go off about everything and uh one day there was an article about like um like the like like school shootings and Mm -hmm. like teen you know younger people you know like killing killing themselves killing you know mass shootings and stuff yeah and all i could think of is like he's like you know there's a problem with these kids and i was like you know look at through time you know there's it's always been around just more out there you know we're talking about it more now like mm-hmm. we probably should because i think that's the route to fixing the problem is first talking about it but uh the idea of it came was like from him going off about how twisted these people are now and i'm like you know it's always people have always been twisted yeah you know and that was kind of the thought was you know i wanted to like old school meet new school type of thing you know like that's kind of how i came up with the idea yeah it's it's so good he said yeah it's about these like three kids well like high school students yeah they're they're high school students and like the one kid he was they were watching the newscast and they were talking about mass shootings and stuff and he was like oh these they don't know how to do it type of thing you know and you can tell, like, the Austin character is already severely messed up in that. Yeah. And then he, I, I like how, like, you got the guy who, you got the messed up guy. You got the guy that agrees with everything. He's, like, the follower. And then you yeah. got kind of, like, the good guy. Yeah. That's like, I don't want to do this. Yeah. But you're my buddy, so I tag along, I guess. And that's the vibe I kind of got with it. And, but uh, I can't even talk about it because I don't want to ruin it. But Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, that was, that was kind of, like, the, <laughs> like, I wanted, like, to, it to feel like almost like there was a this mentor you know this psycho guy bringing the good guy into it you know and i kind of wanted to f- have that feel so i then that but that yes man i i put him in there just on the fact that it feels like he needed that extra like little 
mentorship from an outside. Extra little push. Yeah, an extra little push type of thing. So what I love about you two is the fact that you were been friends for like 30 years, you said? You was, met, yeah, met in kindergarten? Yeah. yeah. And I, you know, I'm a little jealous. I've had a <laughs> few friends that I, you know, I met back in the kindergarten, first grade been best friends for since you know maybe a couple of years after high school you know did everything together but you know we grew apart you know like my Mm -hmm. and they they were you know actors too but you know they went about the most uh the safe realistic approach you know going to school and uh you know getting these great careers and you know and i and i still love them um you know and i'm happy for them that they went that route but i was the one that kind of you know stayed with chasing my personal dream which was to be you know a successful actor um you know we our routes went two different directions you know we still talk from time to time we still support each other um but you guys are you know had this passion had this dream and you know your best friends you know 30 years later you're doing it and it's really cool and I, you know and you guys you know grew up loving these horror films and and you guys you know have that vibe with about you and i love it you know i think you know you two, me and my brother would get along very well. <laughs> you, my brother could be like, you know, a new best friend for you guys. I, he's <laughs> up here. Oh man, like his bedroom, you know, there's like a Chucky doll hanging from a noose in his room. And, <laughs> oh man, it's pretty. And, and that noose we used in Happy Birthday that had the skeleton kind of hanging off to the side. I still have that hanging in my garage. And I wasn't paying attention <laughs> yesterday and I about hung myself in my own garage. Oh man. Because it was just kind of hanging out there. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah I forgot that was there. It, it doesn't help that it's like a black rope and the the garage is kind of dark because I, I i walked into it a couple times too and i'm like well, i'm just happy i'm a little too tall for it yeah i got the downside then yeah you're, you're hot hanging in my garage no but you guys have a beautiful relationship and i'm so happy for you guys um pursuing your dream and uh you know i'm really happy i met you guys and i'm looking forward to working with you guys again in the yeah, future can't wait do you um did you guys like always have support from your family and friends to pursue this or was it just something that you guys like love to do, so you were just going to do it anyway? I feel like when it came to most of our other friends, it was more of a, they know we're into it. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, any kind of social media, if they see something, they're like, oh, yeah, we'll tag Derek and Joe in this because they get a oh, kick yeah, out of this yeah, kind yeah. of stuff. It's not so much, you know, I don't really get from, well, at least my, I mean, from who I talk to, it's not so much, oh, what are you guys working on now? What's mm-hmm. next? It's like, hey, did you see this one? Well, oh, yeah. I saw it, but I'm trying to work on my own stuff right now, so... For me, like I got quite a bit of uh, support from my family, my mom, my sisters, definitely. Uh, my oldest sister, she's a, the one that really got me into scary movies. She's like 12 years older than me. <laughs> and so she was going to the phase of watching like scary movies when she's a teenager. And I'm like six years old watching, <laughs> watching Hellraiser and being that's, scarred for that's life. That's kind of how I was, <laughs> yeah. man. Like my sister would always let, watch like Chucky and stuff yeah. like that. And for some reason, she said it was my favorite movie when I was a kid. And I'm like, I can hate that movie now. I know what happened. Uh, see, I mean, I, I am definitely not a, a horror person lover at all. Like, I mean, I like it at, at times, but Which like... I think it's so weird because you made no reply. I know. And I've made other films that are horror for some reason i always think like horror is the easier route to go with films and it's definitely not i think that people often think that especially first time filmmakers think that horror is like the easier genre to do but it's definitely not to like scare an audience is like so much more than just like showing Mm -hmm. a a monster or whatever it's like the fear of the unknown yeah and that's why i like a lot of older movies yeah. yeah the ones that like you don't really see what the monster or the mm-hmm. bad guy or you only see it a few times those for me are like the best and you know yeah. like i know i get like a lot of like crap for saying one of my top 10 favorite movies is the the blair witch project oh dude because i love the blair you witch never project. see what's going it's the definitely money. like you a never slow burn but yeah. also i just love it man yeah. and like they did i don't know if you know but they did so much like marketing for that to where mm. like they even had missing photos of the cast to make it seem real that's how like dedicated yeah. they were to me. Everybody yeah. thought it was for the longest time. Yeah. Well, yeah, dude, I thought too. it was real. Because like, even if you went to the website, there was no. Yeah. There was no. There were no links to production. No. Or anything like that. Yeah. All the like, only thing we had a link to was missing person pages. Yes. Yeah. yeah, there it was, was a, crazy. There was a document. They made a documentary about the documentary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but the Blair, and then they they really did. They made a sequel to it, which was complete. The, the, the Book of Shadows. The Book of Shadows. And then they came out with one a couple of years ago, and that one was just, I don't know if you've seen it. The remake? But I don't. 
it wasn't a remake it was a sequel yeah oh, it was and yeah, it yeah. Was, did you it, like it it was Probably the worst. No, it was so bad. Yeah, I, I sucked. I, I hated it. I didn't so like the much. sequel no, either. Yeah, man. I didn't care for the sequel either. Because like, didn't it wasn't found footage anymore, right? It was more like the book of shadows. Uh, the book of shadows yeah. was like an actual. Yeah, they, these cinema. people were like going on a tour. And I didn't tour vibe with that. Some nut that lived out in the woods. Yeah, yeah. I didn't vibe with that at it, all. And we were talking about this. You always go to the special features to see mm -hmm. how it's made. Did you on that DVD? Did you rewatch it and realize that? Um. They had letters, and you could spell out the letters. It would say door, water, stuff like that. And if you rewatch the movie, when they're shutting the door in the guy's house, the witch's face is on the back of the door. It flashes up there real quick. Or mm. When there's a ripple in the water, you'll see another image come up rippling in For the water. For the original movie? In the Book of Shadows. The Book of Shadows. Oh, like yeah. they, they threw all this extra hidden stuff. In yeah, there. you have to pay attention to it. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of cool, though. Yeah. So they, they, they tried a little bit to do the, the cooler things with yeah. that. Yeah. So, how do you feel about horror films that aren't gruesome at all? Like, do you like your horror films to, like have those slaughtery kills, or I personally don't. I mean, my I one of, one of my top favorite movies is The Exorcist. Yeah, yeah. That's I one mean, of my favorites. the whole fe I mean, like, when you hear a scratching or an unfamiliar noise, and that's what you're walking towards, that's what terrifies yeah. me. Mine's blood splatter. Yeah. I mean, that's cool and all, but if I don't know what's there, that's that more. scares me more. Yeah, it's like the psychological that's for me you know because it's that psychological thing it's kind of like it's, it's the fear inside it's of the us fear all. that's like the realism you know, to like yeah. what fear would be of being yeah. paranoid and like what's out there in the yeah. dark i mean i could watch people being torn up all the time yeah. you know? i'm not going to be scared of it because i know it's not really real but then you show me a guy that's going to kill his friend mm -hmm. yeah that's good that's kind of scary like amityville horror <laughs> for me was like a big horror that film that i one. loved man oh yeah i did yeah, that's made, a good one they've made so many like sequels uh, <laughs> yeah the they've I, kind of trashed i had it, a but. box set of that when i was a kid i don't i'm i'm kind of happy i lost it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but there were some bad ones in there yeah ghost girls Scare the shit out of me, like the Grudge is. Man. Oh yeah, that stuff freaks me out. Like you know, any like sh you know, little girl with like the hair over her face and over <laughs> yeah. her hallway scares the crap out of me. Yeah, and Puppet Master, that shit. <laughs> Puppet scary. Master. I had nightmares. You know, Leech Girl. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was, yeah, I was, yeah, I was yeah, dreams yeah. waking up as a kid, and there's like this little doll like crapping in my mouth. <laughs> Dude, that scared the shit out of me. Did you guys ever watch a movie called The Darkness Falls? Yeah, the yeah, the Tooth Fairy. Oh, yeah. oh my god. god, dude, that movie was. Scary as hell for me. It still is. I won't watch it. Will not. Really? Watch it. All time. One of my one of my big ones is my mom's the one that got me into watching horror. Yeah, my mom of all people. She's like, <laughs> I'm like, can I watch that? She's like, you're not gonna be able to sleep. I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> and I watched like Return of the Living Dead. Okay. And mm -hmm. I saw Tar Man in the basement. Yeah, I proceeded not to go in my basement for like the next five years. Yeah. <laughs> mom's like, go down, go down, pick up the laundry. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> There's something down there. Yeah, I go, Tar Man under the damn stairs. He's gonna grab me when I go down there. Dude, mine was like Jeepers Creepers was like my all time scariest movie as well. I don't know why. This movie freaks me the fuck out, dude. <laughs> Have you guys seen that? Yeah, Jeepers yeah. Creepers, oh, yeah. yeah. And then they ruined it with the, the sequel. They do that a lot yeah. where like the first movie will be so good. Have you seen the third one? There's a third one? Yeah, yeah it came they, out like they last made, year. They, oh. they almost made the monster comedic relief. Oh. Oh, yeah, I hate it. Was, it was I wanted crazy. to like it. I wanted to. I liked the first two. I didn't even know yeah, that. The they first two weren't bad, but then like that, the third one, they turned so much of it into CGI. Ah, dude. You, and it was like bad CGI. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys um, ever grow up reading scary stories to tell in the dark? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, get, yeah. I still yeah. have them. Yeah, Did you guys see the movie at all yet? Joe has. I have not. How'd you feel about it? You know, I actually really enjoyed it. I did too, man. It's getting a lot of shit, but I love that movie. Yeah. I thought, well, I didn't love it, but I liked it a lot. I, I liked good. it. Like it that, cool the jangly the man was yeah. probably it was like the best thing Dude. I've ever seen in a long I time. I think the weakest part of the... Well, I, I guess I don't want to ruin it for you, so I, I won't. I'll, I'll, I'll ruin I'll it for you, though. No, you know what? You <laughs> that's what Joe always does. I'm, I'm going to ruin it for you. I'm still going to watch it, I'm damn, just gonna but say you ain't going to ruin anything yeah. for me. That part in the hallway with the big fat woman. Oh, yeah. That was so cheesy and weird. Yeah, I like... I could have done without that. Yeah. That one was that wasn't the best. Uh, the, it wasn't. It didn't for me. That didn't like yeah. raise my attention. I was like, hurry up and get this over. Yeah, it's, uh, boring as hell. <laughs> yeah, you know, how many times does he have to run down this hallway before he dies? Yeah. <laughs> my my favorite story though was that the girl that has the missing toe and she comes after. Oh yeah, you. yeah. I'm glad they brought that. Yeah, movie, man. yeah. That's in the trailer, so that's not a point. <laughs> oh, no. Joyride. Yeah, I don't trust a damn semi driver. <laughs> oh, dude, yeah, yeah, that's a cool. He, and after after that movie came out, uh, I had a, we have a mutual friend, Justin. Okay. Pork, pork chop. Yeah. 
<laughs> we, 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 we know so, multiple Justins. <laughs> yeah, I, that's why I had to specify pork chop. Well, we were doing, we were just dicking around. We watched that movie. And he had a CB in his truck around the interstate one day, and I started doing that and we're trying to be funny, you know, on the CB radio. Ha ha! We saw this on Joyride. Oh, getting on there. And the guy replies, "Yeah, I can see you in the car doing that. I know it's you." I'm like, Whoa. "That's fucking trippy, <laughs> dude." Yeah, God, yeah. There's so many films out there, man, that just have definitely... a lot of them are older. Like, it's mm. so hard to trust a good new horror film. I haven't found a good new. Well, I like The Quiet Place a lot. I thought that was a good film. The Quiet Place was pretty good. But well, there hasn't the, really... the Conjuring series isn't. Is yeah, good. it's not too it's terribly. Good. I like Get Out. Get Out was Get Out was good, yeah. dude. He makes some good films, dude. Yeah. yeah. What was the film that he just came out with? Us. Us. I haven't seen that yet. Is that good? No, I haven't seen that one yet. I just... So good? <laughs> so good. He loves so good. it. He loves it. <laughs> so, we get a yeah. thumbs up. We get a thumbs up from Emil. All right, guys. Well, we're getting close to wrapping up the, the, the podcast here. And we normally ask our guests, like, what's some sort of inspirational uh, thing that you'd give to a younger, a younger kid who's wanting to pursue filmmaking? Or what would you tell your younger self who's wanting to do this? start sooner <laughs> <laughs> um you know just yeah like really just do it you got to do it you know you can't just sit there and say i'm going to do it eventually you actually have to go out and do it the other thing is probably make sure when you go out to do it like you <laughs> you think about what you're doing before you go you know just don't rush it you mm-hmm. know I'd say get, make as many connections as you can. Yeah, now. yeah. As Don't for burn do, bridges. doing happy birthday, meeting Dylan, meeting Rob, just all these people I get to meet now. Well, it's gonna be future connections I can use later on. Like, Absolutely, m- m- it's a wider pool I can work with if I want to do a project later and. Don't be afraid to go out and meet new people in the industry. I mean, it's... Yeah, man. I think for me, starting out, that was a big intimidating thing for me. It was like finding people, especially actors, who <laughs> yes. are going to do this crazy shit yes. that I have in my script. <laughs> and it's so great to meet a Dylan and a Rob. And a, you guys met Amanda, who loves to act yes, as well. Yes. So, yeah, man, making connections is huge in this industry, for mm-hmm. sure. Uh, do you guys have anything else you want to promote? Anything else that people can follow you on, check you out on? You guys got an Instagram? Well, we have the Creature and the Creep Facebook page right now, which we're hoping to build up into Sweet. more. We're hoping to actually turn that into a Is that where Happy Birthday will kind of... It will pop up on, yeah. Updates we, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. Sweet. All right, guys. Well, All right. Well, I'm extremely happy I met you both <laughs> and really looking forward to working with you guys again. Um, you guys are new into the game, but I there's so much potential. And you guys have like your unique personality, your style, and I love it. There's not a whole lot of there's there's I've, I've never met anybody I was never like told you guys. I style, but thank you. You got beautiful style. <laughs> you guys are, are beautiful. You sure you're looking at Joe. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, guys, and thanks everybody that uh, you know checked out this episode. It was you know a nice little change. You know we don't do duos too often, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, you know, give us some comments, like, share, spend the love, share the love. Just cut it, man. I'm running out of things to say. No, keep going, keep going. <laughs> oh my gosh! Thank you. Good night. Peace.